Topaz Labs are at it again. You know what? There's another new update. This is version 0.7.2. We're going to go over some of the new updated features today, but also this is going to be about working with resize. How do we upsize our photos or downsize our photos? Yes, I said downsize in Topaz Photo AI. Stay tuned. Greetings everyone out there. Thanks for tuning in to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'm going to go over some of the new features in Photo AI, but today it's all about resizing. I haven't done a resize video yet. Have you noticed inside of Photo AI, it's not called gigapixel, but resize. With resize, you can either resize up or resize down, which you'll find out here shortly. Have you tried out Photo AI yet? And if not, why not? If you own Denoise, Sharpen, and Gigapixel and have current license, this is a free piece of software for you. So go ahead and get it. If you don't yet own all the pieces of software, you can complete your bundle. Just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. And if you own one or two pieces of the software, you can complete that bundle at a nice savings. If you don't own any of the software, you can buy the image quality bundle and save $59.98 off the entire software package, which is a really good savings. And use that same link to complete your bundle as well. Now, I make a small commission when you do that, and it helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. This is a great way of supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I want to thank you so much. Thanks for all of you who use my affiliate links and are planning on using them in the future. What you're viewing on the screen right now is all the changes that have been made since version 0.6.0, and this is also a download link for Mac or Windows to get Photo AI. I'll leave this link in the description below this video, but as you can see, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes changes here and one of the big changes deals with what i showed in my last video working with camera profiles adobe profiles linear profiles you can do that now so watch that video there'll be a link at the end of this video where you can go ahead and watch that in case you haven't that's a pretty big change in my opinion another big change is that you can now downsize down to 0.5 times that's half the size of the image now you see what's new in version 0.7.1. The Photo AI plugin now automatically installs to Photoshop Elements. So if you have Photoshop Elements, you're going to be happy. And on the latest update, 0.7.2, which I'll be showing you today, this is a small update with a bug fix. Fix the file extension not being properly preserved in external editors. Sorry for that long introduction, but I wanted to make sure you understand everything about this new early access update to Photo AI. And now let's do some resizing. We're going to start out here in Lightroom. I'm going to upsize a iPhone image. If you have smartphones out there, and you take a lot of photos, Gigapixel or now Resize in Photo AI is a great way to upsize your images. And you can also downsize your images, which you will see also. Now you can work with raw files with Photo AI, or you could work with JPEGs, TIFFs, I believe even PNGs, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this new Photo AI product. I myself am extremely happy with the way Topaz are going with their AI products. Before I go on, I almost forgot to tell you, Photo AI will prompt you if there's an update available. It'll be in the upper right-hand corner. Just click that blue box that says Update Available, and you will get the latest version of the Early Access Photo AI. So that's pretty cool and new. Let me give you a bit of a background here. I used the linear profile on this iPhone DNG RAW file, and I just made some basic adjustments. Now, this is my workflow. Your workflow may vary. This is the way I like to do it, and I'm really not going to change. I get the best results this way for me. I've added a little bit of a tone curve on here, uh, lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, and enable profile corrections. I shut off detail, so no sharpening or noise reduction. And I also uh, did some transformation. I just clicked auto here, and that's it. Now, all I need to do is right-click on the image, go to Edit In, and find Photo AI. If you're not seeing it show up in that list, uh, what you need to do on a Mac is come up here to Lightroom Classic, click, and click on Preferences. It may be different for Windows. If anybody knows how to do it for Windows, let us know in the comments section below. But for me, I would come over here to External Editing and see Additional External Editor. 
you can click choose here and navigate your file browser to photo AI and you'll add it. Mine's already there, so I'll click cancel and let's X out of here. I'll go ahead and right click on the image, come to edit in, and we're going to go to Topaz Photo AI. We're going to be editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Now you have a choice here of file format. I always use TIFF and then you have color space. I use Pro Photo. Bit depth, you have a choice between 16 or 8. I recommend 16, it's a higher resolution. And then you could change your resolution here. Uh, mine's set at 300, but I have an Epson printer, so I usually set that to 360. And then you can use compression here. If anybody understands about compression, somebody commented that a zip file has all the information. It'll be a smaller file, so you may want to check into that. And if anybody knows, leave me a note in the comments section below if the resolution will be the same. I always use none, but if somebody says, hey, it's the same, I may end up using zip. It may take a little bit longer to turn it into a TIFF, but that would be worth it if it saves on file size. Go ahead and leave a comment if you know about that. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit, and that'll send us into Topaz Photo AI. Now, it's analyzing the image as soon as you bring it in. And as you can see over here, it's subjects detected, no faces detected, subject is in focus, image noise level is severe, and we have our autopilot settings on by default. If you don't want to use the autopilot settings, you want to do things for yourself, you can open up any of these groups here. Face recovery, remove noise, sharpen, and enhance. Now, I believe enhance only works with the resizing. If you know otherwise, let us know in the comment section below. Now, we're notified that the subject is in focus, so we see no sharpening here. And we see we have severe noise. It's claiming we have severe noise. Well, I'll believe that. If we zoom in, let's zoom in to say 200%. It'll have to update itself as it goes here. And if we look at the image on the left of the split screen, that is the noise level we have right there. Yeah, it's pretty severe. There's some chroma noise in there. Because remember, in Lightroom, I use no noise reduction or sharpening. So it's doing a good job there. And I'm happy with that noise reduction level. If you want to, you can click right here and you can change your AI model. Right now it's locked on at normal or we could click strong and change it to strong. So we have choices. The strength is at 36. Now, if we move it to the right, we'll remove more noise, obviously. And to the left, we'll be able to decrease the noise removal amount. I'm just moving down the line. We will get to resizing here shortly. I'm going to click here and close the remove noise group. My experience with Photo AI is it's not very aggressive on sharpening in the autopilot settings. Let me know in the comment section below if you feel the same way. And some of you have already commented about that, saying that was the case. Let me go ahead and open up sharpen. Now you could click anywhere here. I find you don't have to click on this toggle. So I'm going to click here. It opens up sharpen. I'm going to share with you some observations. I believe I said in my last video that I don't think this is an automatic setting here and I'm kind of flip-flopping on that because and I'll show you why right now it's on motion blur right if I click on lens blur and change the sharpening amount to just any old number like that and let it update here now that's a lot of sharpening on there and then if I go back remember this is at 50 and at lens blur if I go back and reset autopilot settings and open this up again, it's back to the original motion blur and 18. So I think it is an initial sharpening starting point. Let me know what you think if you're finding that to be true. Now I am in a 200% and I think I could use a little more sharpening. So I'm going to drag this to the right and see what I can come up with here. Give it a chance to update. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's try it on lens blur. Let it update and see if we see a difference here. And I recommend try these different models here. I don't know. I think I like motion blur better. And I think that amount is good. So I'm good with sharpening. And now enhance. Enhance is off by default. At least that's what I'm noticing. But we'll get back to enhance in a minute. But let's come down to resize. Right now we're at 1x. And here's my pixel dimensions, width and height. 2938 by 3917. Now that would be our pixel dimensions. In gigapixel, they also give us a 0.5. You can definitely go to 0.5. That would cut the image size in half, hence downsizing the image. But right now, we don't see a 0.5x. However, you can get to 0.5 down here under width and height by changing the pixel dimensions. But I believe in a future update, we will see the 0.5x here. So hang in there. It's coming. 
Anyway, this 2938, if I divide that by two, comes to 1,469 pixels, or if I divide 3917 by two, it comes down to 1,958.5 pixels. So I could come here and just type in 1,469, tap my tab key to go to the next field, and you can see here that now this came to 1958, which is actually half. Now you don't see the 0.5 here because it doesn't deal in decimals. And remember, I'm zoomed into 200%, and now my image is half its size. Now just for the sake of fun and experimentation, let's change this zoom ratio to 100% so we can see what size the image is. See the image right here? Let me get out of this split screen view right now. Go back to a single view. So that's the actual 100% size of the image right there. Now let's go ahead and go back to 1x and see the image change in size. See how much bigger it's got? And look at this um, preview up here. You can see the image has now doubled in size. Now, if I come here again and enter that pixel of 1469, you'll see the image is definitely downsizing after I hit the tab key. See how it's shrunk in size. So you can go down to half the size of an image. And maybe at some point they'll even let you go lower, but you can downsize. And I've had some comments, as I said, I think I said earlier that some folks were wondering, can you still downsize with this program? And the answer is yes. And you can also downsize using Topaz Gigapixel. You've always been able to do that. And a lot of folks don't know that. By the way, 1469 is exactly half the pixel count. If I go to 1468, this little blue area will turn red and it will not downsize. So it's got to be exactly half the size or anywhere from one half up to six times you can resize or downsize. But for downsizing, don't go below 0.5 times or one half the pixel dimensions. Now remember, this is an iPhone image that I want to upsize. So let's go back to 1X and get it back to its original size. And let's say I want to upsize it two times. Right now it's at 2938 by 3917. Let's upsize it two times. That'll bring it up to 5876 by 7834. Now we'll give it a second or two to update itself. Now it's doing its enhancement. And as soon as that's done, we'll see our result. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, don't forget, you can zoom around the image or move around the image, I should say. It's going to have to update itself each time you do that. But I think it's worth that extra effort just to see if everything looks good and there's no kind of weird artifacting going on. Here's a little tip. If you want to speed up the render time, change your zoom amount to a higher number. Each number gets faster. And now for the enhance feature, let's go ahead and open it up. But notice this little green dot here by a lock. It's locked in at what it believes it should be set for, low resolution. But you could change this to graphics or natural. But I find what it picks for me is generally always right. But you could change these out and do some experimentations if you feel so inclined. You'll have a much longer list than Gigapixel AI, but I think that's coming here to Photo AI. They just haven't got there yet. But again, let's be patient. I think I'm done here in Photo AI. I'll be saving this back to Adobe Lightroom Classic, but I just want to say I'm going to leave a Dropbox link in the description below the video where you could download my test results. The original file will have no noise reduction, sharpening, or upsizing. The second file will have noise reduction, sharpening, and upsizing, so you can compare. And now I'll go ahead and click on Save to Lightroom Classic, and I'll let this render out in real time. I'm on an iMac with a 2019 processor in it. So we'll see how long this takes. And I'm finding it's pretty quick and I'm sure it'll get quicker and quicker as they keep continuing to update this great product, which is the future in my opinion. I'm really excited about Photo AI. I think it's really gonna speed up all of our workflows. So here we go. I'm just trying to fill some dead space here while this renders out for you. And it's just about done and we will be back in Lightroom right about now. The image on the left is the upsized image. The image on the right, speaking of thumbnails, is the original image. So let me go into XY comparison mode. When I do, they both look the same size, but here's where you'll see the difference when I zoom into 100%. So I'm gonna come right here in this image, zoom into 100%, but see how much bigger this image is compared to this image. 
And let's even go into, say, let's go into 200%. But you'll notice the image on the right has noise in there. The image on the left is totally sharp and clean. It looks really great. Let me go back to 100%, but there you go. And don't forget to download these test results and see for yourself how good of a job that this product is doing. One feature that is not yet in Photo AI, and that is the Recover Detail, which will be found in the Remove Noise section. I'm sure that will be coming. That's a great slider. It's in Denoise AI, and it lets you recover some of the original detail. And sometimes it's nice. You can add just a slight very slight amount of noise in there. And I mean slight. It just looks a little more natural if you're really like zoomed in. But this is doing a great job and I'm sure that's coming. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.